Welcome back to our higher level IB Chemistry video series. This is the second and final video in IB Chemistry Topic 14, Chemical Bonding and Structure, where we will be looking at hybridization, delocalization, and ozone depletion. Before starting this video, ensure you watch our first IB Chemistry Topic 14 video, as this is a direct continuation. Let's consider the structure of methane. We know it would have a tetrahedral structure, as it has four electron domains. But noting the electronic configuration of carbon and hydrogen, and then drawing the outer orbitals, we can see two problems with our logic so far. None of the carbon's 2p orbitals, or hydrogen's 1s orbitals, point in a direction suitable for bonding these atoms in a tetrahedron. And carbon does not have four unpaired electrons available to form the four covalent bonds we know it does, one to each hydrogen. This is where hybridization is key. It is the mixing of atomic orbitals to produce a new set of orbitals, which have both S and P characteristics, and are better arranged in space for covalent bonding. There are two distinct stages to address these two problems, promotion and hybridization. First, promotion occurs which involves the movement of an electron from carbon's 2s orbital to its unoccupied 2p orbital. This gives four unpaired electrons, enabling bonding. Now, mixing of the 2s and 2p orbitals can occur to create sp hybrid orbitals. You need to memorize three distinct combinations of hybrid orbitals. If the 2s orbital combines with one 2p orbital, two sp hybrid orbitals are formed. Since there are two electron domains, these would have a linear geometry. If the 2s orbitals combined with two 2p orbitals, three sp2 hybrid orbitals are formed. Since there are three electron domains, these have a trigonal planar geometry. If the 2s orbital combines with three 2p orbitals, four sp3 hybrid orbitals are formed. Since there are four electron domains, these have a tetrahedral geometry. You may find it useful to remember that the number of orbitals combined equals the number of hybrid orbitals created. The result of hybridization are orbitals which point directly towards the atoms to which they bond, and so they are more effective for covalent bonding despite the fact that hybridization requires energy. This is the case as the amount of energy given back in the formation of more stable bonds outweighs the input, making this process favorable. For your IB Chemistry higher level course, there are two specific examples of hybridization which arise very commonly in the exam, ethene and ethine. Let's start with ethene. Each carbon first undergoes promotion to give one 2s orbital and three 2p orbitals, each containing one electron. Don't forget each hydrogen has got its own 1s orbital containing one electron. Next, each carbon undergoes hybridization to create three sp2 hybrid orbitals each, since both need to create three bonds. This uses two of their 2p orbitals in the process leaving one 2p orbital on each carbon containing one electron. The sp2 hybrid orbitals all collide in an axial manner, two from each carbon colliding with the hydrogen's 1s orbitals, and one colliding with the other sp2 hybrid orbital from the adjacent carbon. This therefore forms three sigma bonds for each carbon. Therefore, the two remaining 2p orbitals on each carbon can overlap in a parallel manner to form a pi bond. This therefore creates two bonds between the carbons, one sigma and one pi, thus representing a double bond. Looking back at our displayed formula, we can now appreciate where all the bonds have come from. Let's now look at ethine. Like with ethene, each carbon undergoes promotion. Next, each carbon undergoes hybridization to create two sp hybrid orbitals, since both need to create two bonds. This uses one of their 2p orbitals in the process, leaving two 2p orbitals on each carbon containing one electron. As with ethene, 
the sp hybrid orbitals on each carbon all collide in an axial manner to bond to the hydrogens and the other carbon. This therefore forms two sigma bonds for each carbon. This therefore leaves two 2p orbitals on each carbon, each containing one electron. Therefore, the remaining two 2p orbitals can both overlap in a parallel manner to form two separate pi bonds. This therefore creates three bonds between the carbons, one sigma and two pi, thus representing a triple bond. Looking at the displayed formula, we can see this confers. Great, you have now grasped hybridization. You've now reached the end of the preview for this IB Science video. If you want to check out the full video, head over to our website and select a membership plan today.